Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, out there in Facebook world. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes. Thank you. Welcome to the Dish on Dogs. As you know, I'm your host, Mike Gould. Here's uh, lovely Ashley Pizzo. We have Riley, a female, three-year-old, 21-month-old, 21-month-old. Uh, what the hell is she? What kind of dog is she? I don't know. Mini Golden Doodle. Oh, mini Golden Doodle. <laughs> we have her, her, her mom and dad here, Laura and Mike, are, are uh, Riley's moms. And on the second, moms. mom and dad. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, it's 8 o'clock. I'm tired. I want to go right, home right. already. So, for those of you watching on Facebook, this is an example. So, Riley came in today for what we call a turbo training lesson. Mom, Laura brought Riley in. And I videoed a few minutes of our session, kind of the before and after. And in the second segment, these guys will jump on, just say the behaviors at home, and Laura will give you her interpretation of what happened. And, and uh, anyway, it'll be a lot of fun. But we have a lot of other things to talk about, a lot of other things to talk about. So, um, so listen, stay with us during the commercials. Those of you on Facebook, you stay with us during the commercial, and you'll get to watch our seven-minute demonstration, and you'll see actually how well Riley has done since we met four hours ago, five, six hours ago. I don't know when it was. Uh, and we'll demonstrate the simplicity of dog behavior, the simplicity, how easy it is when you communicate to a dog like a dog and not a human. So mom was a human communicator for sure. So she's uh, loving, caring, <laughs> But she was doing the alphabet with all kinds of things. I got a lot of good video. If she allows, if she signs a release, it's going on Facebook. And uh, we have a lot of good stuff. But she's got a good sense of humor, fortunately. She put up with me today, which isn't always easy. And as a result, Riley, look at this. She's, Riley's like a little movie star here. She's not barking at anything. People are going by. By the way, the airport is a crazy place. This is distractions, there's PA systems, different floor surfaces, that got them Zamboni going by. So if she can deal with this, she can deal with anything. Actually, this is probably one of the most difficult environments for a dog, uh, uh, a, a, a uh, airport. So forgive me, I'm a little tired, but we're going to get through this. You're going to get through this just fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> You're on Facebook. <laughs> Live. We chuckled. What? We chuckled into this area. No, I can't fine. tell you how many times. Once we start. And and this. Oh, this was in here, yeah? They're playing a commercial now. You're fine. I saw it. it just never clicked. That. It was a weird thing. Had this in my high school. In five, four, three. Welcome everybody, welcome to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. I'm the mayor, affectionately known as the mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the absolute happiest dogs on earth. Uh, we have a happy dog in the studio today. We're gonna get everybody a chance to see. Houndstown, USA, we now have seven, lo no, seven how many? 17 locations. 17 seven locations states. in seven states. We're adding Orlando. We're going to be opening three locations in Orlando and maybe Texas very soon. But anyway, for those of you listening or watching on Facebook, we love our Facebook people because they don't have a life, so they can sit there on. No, I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. I had to get off Facebook because of stalkers, you know, ex-wives that were, you know, looking. It was a bad situation, so I can't be on Facebook, but I hear it's really a lot of fun. So anyway, Houndstown USA is home to the happiest dogs on earth because we allow dogs to interact in a pack environment. Dogs being pack animals, they come to Houndstown, we put them in groups of, based on their size and temperament, age, size, temperament, and they play all day long. And they don't get yelled at, they don't hear human language, they don't 
are asked to do things. They don't, they're not, never asked to sit. They're never asked to stay. They just have a nice experience. They hump, jump, and dump. And I, they can do that without being yelled at. They can't do that at home. So we have this fully interactive. We also do boarding, grooming. Frankly, we're all booked up. All of our, we have seven locations on Long Island, and they're pretty much all booked up. Yeah. However, with that said, we did open just recently Houndstown Garden City. Centrally located in Nassau County by the Roosevelt Field Mall, all the court buildings. So if you need a place to bring your dog, they, we literally just opened a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And Colleen and Ann there are doing a fantastic job. And if you tell them you heard about us on the radio, they'll definitely give you a free day of day care, temperament yeah. evaluation. And Hicksville. And, oh, right. And Hicksville also on South Oyster Bay Road just opened last week. So we're kind of done on Long Island. We're in Island Park, Port Jeff, Deer Park, Port Jeff, everywhere, all over the place. So. And it's a great environment. We've taken, since our inception, we've taken care of over a million dogs. So, so that's how we know. And, and uh, I think if I'm right, Riley might be coming for daycare at some point of boarding as you came in there. All right, we'll talk about that in a little <laughs> while. So I have Ashley Pizzo, I have Riley, a mini golden doodle. So for those of you who listen regularly or watch, we, we try to bridge the gap of the human brain and the dog brain. That's what the, the dish on dogs is all about, is trying to explain the needs of a dog, the needs of a human. They're different. They're different. Dogs are simple. They're not complicated. They don't have complicated emotions. They just need to understand what you want from them. So dogs are not that, you know, we watch Benji on television, we watch Rin Tin Tin, and we watch all these shows. Uh, and we think dogs are human or like superheroes. They're not. They really have a relatively small brain. They are intelligent, obviously, and they're emotional, but they're not complicated emotions. And that's what we're going to demonstrate or talk about in a little while. So we just met Riley today, this afternoon. But, but let me go over a few things. I got to give here. We have a new producer, Danielle. So we got rid of our last producer. We gave her a job as a co host. But uh, so now, let's see. Oh, so last week's show, we talked about Luna. Luna was aggressive dog, bit a couple of people, including its owner. So there goes for the, the term, the dog shouldn't bite the, uh, the hand that feeds them. Well, Luna did. Yeah. And we had a nice time. If you look at the video there, Luna joined us last week. She did great. Dad did great. What was the, his father's first name? Jonathan. John, Jonathan. Jonathan did a great job. So he might be listening tonight. And it's never a done deal. So here's a news alert. Dogs bite. Dogs bite. News alert. Dogs don't talk. News alert. Dogs bite. Okay, those are two things that I want everyone to know. As sweet as they may be, as sweet as our little girl Riley here, put in the right situation. Can you show everybody her canine teeth? Show, show her her dental situation. <laughs> So the, I think hey, it's, white. they're nice and white. I'm sure. I'm sure Laura brushes them. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, so dogs are put on earth with canine teeth. Canine teeth are designed to rip and tear skin. That's how they eat. They rip and tear skin. So nature gave them that. They didn't give us that because we crush and, and grind food. Uh, so anyway, make a long story short, dogs don't have opposing thumbs and we talk about this and I know my friend Scott in Florida is probably listening has heard this a thousand times and he might be falling asleep on me so we're gonna throw some good new stuff in here but dogs don't have opposing thumbs so my little granddaughter who is six months old has more ability to do things than a dog she can start turning the pages of her book I read her a book she stakes it Adelin takes the page and she turns it a dog can never really turn the page of a book. I mean, they could get lucky, I guess, and because they don't have thumbs. And then as children grow, they start to stand erect. Dogs will never stand erect. So Adeline, not yet, but in six months from now, I'm hoping she's going to start crawling and then stand Adeline? Adeline's my beautiful granddaughter. I love And Luna Bliss's parents are watching. They just Luna's parents, all right. Have to, we still got 10 fingers over there at home? <laughs> yeah. but, but no, and the point is, and what I did want to mention last night, Joe, we don't talk about training the dog. We respect Luna's personality, uh, and, and we work around it. It doesn't mean Luna will never bite anybody. If she's put into the wrong situation, uh, she's put in a situation where she feels threatened, she has one mechanism, one. She can't call an attorney. She can't call 911. She has her, her canine teeth, her fangs, and they're going to lock down on whoever reaches for her. Uh, if if she's not 
taught certain boundaries. So, so when we talk about dog training, we talk about tra managing dogs, not training dogs. We manage them. We teach them not to sit and stay at the door. Don't go near the door. There's no business. The door is a very stressful place for the dog. You know, the other thing I have a little note here today, again, there was a tiger attack at the Kansas Zoo. I, I, what's so funny? There's not one time, I, I examine dog bites. This is what I kind of do, uh, uh, investigate dog bites. I study dog bites. There's not one dog bite that I've ever examined that was the result of the dogs. It was never, ever the dog's fault. So I know that sounds weird, but it's never the dog's fault. Some human mismanaged the dog. They mismanaged the dog. So this poor woman that got attacked by a, a, a tiger in Kansas, something went wrong. I don't know what, but it wasn't the tiger's fault. It's a tiger. You talk about fangs, their job is to just take and rip meat apart. And in this case, it was the this, this zookeeper. But there was a mistake made. My point is, when I look at a dog bite, it's always the result of a human kind of not understanding and mismanaging. The producer's laughing over there. What's what are you laughing about over there? All right. No. <laughs> yeah, <you're doing> <laughs> yeah. Is that post Malone? Yeah. Text 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 All right. Just text me. All right. What else do I want to, uh, to, to say about that? So the zoo, we have. Oh, so we talked about Luna. We're going to take a break in two minutes, and then we're going to bring. Uh, we're going to formally introduce Riley, Laura, and Mike. Um, what else? I wanted to give some shout outs. Who to? Oh, Bergen County. If you have a dog and you live in Bergen County, New Jersey, beautiful facility there. We have a beautiful place. If you're a degenerate gambler, Atlantic City. <laughs> South Jersey. South Jersey. The only thing is you pay. If you're going to Atlantic City, you pay before when you drop the dog it's off. It's like huh? deposits. Yeah, right. That's right. you got to pay. <laughs> for, 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 yeah. But Atlantic City, our friends in Pittsburgh on Penn Avenue, if you're listening in now, Joe and Cody down in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is beautiful, beautiful situation. So we have a lot happening. Um, and doggy daycare is a, it's, it's a it's not a nice thing it's a necessity for dogs to socialize properly dogs are dogs it's analogous to bringing children to a park and playing so it's not it's not a luxury for in order for a child to, to grow and socialize they have to interact with other children at some point it's a necessity it's not a, a plus it also has therapeutic benefits of course the dogs Absolutely. don't get overweight they don't get arthritis and so, dogs like Luna flourish in doggy daycare we've never had a issue with Luna. Right, right. So that's the irony. So Luna, the Australian Shepherd that has a, a, a nipping problem, let's say that, or to put it mildly, <laughs> a nipping problem. She does very, she has no aggression towards any one of our staff no. members, any other dog, but we balance the energy. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment, about how we balance energy. We, we, we become the leader. We put stru psychological structure in the dog's life, not necessarily physical, psychological structure. We'll talk to Laura and Mike and explain why the dog is on the left side when we walk, why a dog shouldn't be jumping on you, why a dog shouldn't be in bed with you necessarily. If you invite the dog up, that's one thing. And if she, you tell her to get off, she gets off, that's one thing. But we'll talk about dogs crossing social boundaries. Because what happens is when a dog crosses social boundaries, the next possibility, not always, is they use their teeth to resolve conflict, right? So if they think that your their food, your food is their food. I've had again many times that I see dogs guarding a cheese doodle under a couch, and he bites a child because you don't even know the cheese doodle's there. So anyway, this is going to be a good show. I like Laura. She put up with me today. Anybody that could put up with me <laughs> for an hour, I listen. I put up with her. That's the way I like to put it. Oh. Oh. We're going to take a break. Two minutes, we're back. Then we're going to, for you lucky f people on Facebook, you're going to see a live de demonstration. See you in about two minutes, folks. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Oh, I you love that. Oh, yeah. That was enjoyable. I must have. <coughs> we're going to have some fun. Uh, wonderful. Well, Laura, uh, listening to Uncle Joey Gould's son, Mike Gould. Laura M. Dorsa. Family member of yours, it sounds like. Laura. Laura M. Dorsey. All right, we only got a minute between break. Okay. Uncle Joey Gould's son, Mike Gould. That's my father. All right. Are you good, honey? I She's talking to you. Who are you talking to? These are all the people that old. These are all the people that join in. You see them join. Yeah, you see them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
right. which has been really good. All right, and then when we talk, just get like a hand step yeah. away from here. Oh, yeah, that's right. So just sort of get a little that's closer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pull it. And five, four, a little bit. Three. Better you sit up, yeah, and mm -hmm. you go and pull it towards you a little bit. There you go. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. We're getting a lot of lively comments on our Facebook page. We haven't, we're having fun here. For those of you watching on Facebook, for those of you who are listening, we, we always have an animal guest, or we try to have an animal guest. Our guest today is Riley, a 21-month-old golden doodle, mini golden doodle. Um, and, and you can see a little close up. We showed a few of her very dangerous fangs, uh, her canine teeth. And joining us in the studio is their human mom, the human part. It's uh, Laura and her wonderful husband, Mike, are here. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. All right, speak Pleasure right up to into be. that microphone. Pleasure to be here. That's good. You guys are a lot of fun. So I met Laura today for full disclosure. About six hours ago, you came to our Ronkonkoma location for a training lesson. And uh, you, what was that? Tell everybody, what, what, why did you come? What, were you, what are you looking to do? When you have, why, how did you even hear about Houndstown? Don't be shy. You don't blame your throat. Just talk. <laughs> you talk. You didn't stop talking this afternoon. Voice. Come on. Go ahead. You sound beautiful. Voice. All right. That's so fine. That's fine. So what happened? You came, how did you even hear about Houndstown? A uh, friend. Okay. So then you came and you brought this lovely dog. What was the, What were you trying to accomplish? Tell me. Tell to people. basically follow commands and not jump and greet people with her anxiety-ridden <laughs> issues um, and just basically get off the couch that I was very bad at putting her up on the couch, <laughs> having her in the bed, which shouldn't be in the bed. Well, what was Little what, what, right? So she had here. Here's here's what it is. You are the uh, uh, you know. And again, I was focused on you because you were the only person there. But a typical customer will say, "My dog don't listen to me." So I say, "Well, what does that mean?" And you say, "When I say tell it to do something, it doesn't do it." So dogs don't understand human language. So they don't. They can't pick up a dictionary. If they don't know what a couch is, they don't know anything. They don't know anything. So what, what did you think of the turbo training? So you came in with, it was very direct, I guess you would say that, right? <laughs> it's fine. It was very direct. It taught me something about basics and not looking into the verbiage, shall I say. Okay, you should of, say that. <laughs> right. Of the couch, get down. You know, it's basic commands, and you're right. Right, they, but they when it's done voiceless. We don't talk to dogs. And voiceless. Right. That was the bigger thing. So one thing I tell all yes. my humans that who talk to dogs, anybody who talks to a dog, I'm always waiting for the dog to talk back. And then I can, I have $250,000 put away in an escrow account for the first talking dog. I've been doing this now. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. so, yeah, I know, you did a lot of talking to it. Now, when Riley yeah. says, okay, Mom, I got it. I'm, I'm waiting. Bed. I'm okay. waiting, too. I'm right. waiting. And we'll, it, we'll be at your door. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have $250,000. Because I haven't... So the truth of the matter is, in our her turbo training or our methodology, so then you talked about some things you said you liked, some things you didn't like, and I made it clear that we're just following Mother Nature. It's not, I, I didn't yeah. make dogs. I didn't, the dog's brain is not nearly as sophisticated as the human brain. So a human brain can some, it's developed so fast and it's a wonderful thing. It allows you to listen to music, write music, look at art. It makes you be able to sit here. So when I say to pull the microphone in front of your face, you figured that out. Riley, can you put the microphone in front of your face? Hey, Riley. Attention. So, so the point is, Riley, a dog, unfortunately, lives in a very distorted world, right? There's glass, there's none, none of this resembles nature. Our world is so far removed from mm. nature. There's really very little dirt. I mean, there's, there is, you know, obviously a lot of people have backyards. But right now we're at the airport. This is probably one of the most distracting and stressful places for a dog, because there's a PA system, there's sliding glass doors. We're in a glass bubble right now. People are coming by and looking at her. And there's reflections. There's reflections. Reflection. Dogs don't understand reflections. They don't even know shadows. They they can sometimes see a shadow and think it's another dog. So they start barking literally at their own shadow. 
So dogs orient themselves to movement, movement and sound. So we are completely opposite. Thus, we talk about the dish on dog is bridging this gap of what people's needs are. We talked today, uh, Laura, about human emotion. And you wanted to know if she's going to love you, you know, by, by setting boundaries, will she love you? Correct or not mm -hmm. correct? Right. Absolutely. All right, but what did you take away? I try to break down the simplicity. What was that like for you? She'll be fine. Right. Well, I would say she'll be happy. She happier. doesn't talk. Right. And but, I keep talking to her, and she doesn't want to talk back. And right. I keep trying, just right. like I did my 21-year-old, and right. well, it doesn't well, happen. Right. Well, right. But you put structure. If you don't put structure in their life, a school puts structure. Sometimes if you're a pushover like me, I don't. I spoil my kids, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't put structure. I don't know. And it's actually, at the end of the day, it's not a good thing, right? Because mm -hmm. Absolutely. I enable them, and then they go into the real world. So one of the problems is that. So, so when we look at dogs, at, with our, you only have one brain to look at them with is your human brain. Mm -hmm. You don't, so you don't know what it's like. Dogs don't even see that well. They live 12 inches, in her case, about 10 inches off the ground. She doesn't see that. They see in kind of black and white, blurry vision. So half the time, they, and then as I said before, or today in our lesson, when you yell, not yell, but when you raise your voice or talk to a dog, it's like you raising your voice or talking to a deaf child. If They can't hear you. They can't process. So they just see your lips moving, and they see your body language. So it's a very funny kind of thing. And once I coached you, I made it as simple as riding a bicycle. That's what I'd like to say. Once you get it, and during this commercial, uh, coming up in three minutes, we're going to have Ashley Pizzo take Riley out and kind of navigate around this airport. And then if that goes well, we're going to have Mike jump in on this, and he's going to navigate. Uh, Laura already spent an hour and a half of me harassing her over... It's my turn now. It's his turn. <laughs> I, I did well. He did, she did very well. And how do I know this? By the way, folks. I get corrected now. He gets right. <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah, so we're bilingual here. At Houndstown, we're bilingual, meaning we try to talk to the human brain in English, and then we talk to the dog brain. It's totally two different languages. It's literally a different language uh, that doesn't involve complicated speech. Yes, we make sounds. Uh, I have this effect. Riley's falling asleep over here. I have on the table. On the table. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. so, so we're going to see how this works. And then I'm going to squeak by squeak. By the way, folks, what do you think this squeaky toy is? It's not a reindeer. It's not Santa Claus. It's the sound of a dying animal, a dying, distressed animal. What does it want to do? It wants to eviscerate the dying animal. Take its, take its, it sweeter. Take its it, it disembowel. How do you say that word? You take it. Disembowel. Right. Just, you were right. right. So here it is. So this isn't a reindeer. This is a dying, stressed out animal that she would like to finish off and take the squeak. You know how many people tell me, yeah, she just so she takes the squeaker out because she killed it, for she knocked it off, she finished it off. What is a stick? A stick is a bone, a femur of another animal. So they get a stick and they chase a stick, they're chasing the bones of another animal. So all our lovely little pets are really murderers, they're predators. They're tiny little predators. Oh, yeah. But how's this? We're predators. How, how sick are we? We are predators, only we don't kill them. We go to Whole Foods. Somebody else kills my <laughs> filet mignon for me. It's a third or, party. How's it? Third party involved. Right, third party murderers. <laughs> so how about Kentucky yeah, Fried Chicken? Kind of Think about how sick that is. Think about <laughs> e e eating a bird's bird, bird wings. We're eating ribs of a pig, and we're, we're animals. We're predators. Oh, right. Oh, Riley. All right. So anyway. Really, Mike? Yeah. Nice. After the break, I think we're going to really talk about the difference between over-controlling your dog. And the funny thing is most people that over-control their dog are also letting them cross boundaries. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what does over-controlling mean? I asked Laura today. She she asked the dog to sit. I, and, and, you know, we tease a little bit, but what's the purpose of having a dog sit? And a lot of times people don't really have the answer to that. They think they're supposed to teach it to sit when we really just wanted her not to run away. So over-controlling means you're telling the dog to sit, to stay, uh, whatever, roll over, high five. These are things that are fun to the human, but not necessarily fun to the dog, right? So if you have a, a child and you tell stand at attention, sit down, sit up, don't do this, don't put your hands in your lap. That's over-controlling. We're taking a break. Stay with us on Facebook. We're going to do a little seven-minute uh, uh, break 
and we're going to work with Riley outside and see if we can uh, see how we did today in our turbo training with Laura, Mike, Riley. See you uh, after the break for those of you who aren't on Facebook. All right, take her out there and do I some work. I actually watched her calm down. Right. It's so funny, I did watch her calm down the tongue went back in her mouth. this way here. All right, so here we have our little friend Riley. Notice Riley's, look at how Riley's looking at Ashley. Now the first thing you want to see is she's relaxed. And Riley's tail is up, her mouth is open, she's as happy as can be. Now she's going to make a right, and Riley's going to follow her. Ashley can go fast, the dog will go with her. She can go normal pace, the dog slows down. She comes here, she's going to slow down, and she's going to ask the dog to sit. She didn't even have to. She's standing up. She's not looking, talking, or touching. Now, if you, what's that? I'm done. You're done with what? I'm done. You want to adopt her? Oh, wait. So, so now, so this is Riley. I have the before photos in my phone, which we'll see if I can convince Laura to show you. Now, no. if Ashley, just for the purposes of this demonstration, she's relaxed. She's going to step out with her left foot. The dog's going to come with her. She didn't say anything. Now she's going to make a right. And the dog's following her. Now she's going to make a left. She helped her a little. Then she's going to come to a stop. She's going to ask her. Good. Then she's going to pivot out with her right foot. She dropped the leash. Now she's going back. We've got a few more minutes here. And in the meantime, we're always watching energy. Energy is human beings, living creatures, coming and going. And don't forget, we have, you know, we have, look, last slide of doors, go this way. What the hell do you think a dog thinks this is? Do you think it understands the concept of windows? There's no windows in the wild. She's doing fabulous here. This is movement. Now she's going to stop. She sees mom, so she has to get corrected. A little bit. A correction, by the way, is not overt. It's a tiny little touch. Um, I'm going to squeak. I'm gonna... she, well, she actually likes the squeaky toy more, to, to tell you. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Riley. So here comes, here comes the ball. This is high pressure. There's doors, there's windows, there's reflection, there's mom and dad and Ashley. So Ashley's going to take the pressure off by stepping out with her left and going that way. And then when she's going to go, Ashley's going to go, come into this tile area. Even a change of floor surface is different. My friend Scott Brezelier had a, uh, a, a German Shepherd police dog. He did great on every floor surface except tile. He couldn't go to the Roosevelt Field Mall because a tile is different. This is not in the wild. You don't see Italian marble in the wild. Good, keep going. Pick up, pick up your leash. Good, go left. And then we're going to let Dad do this a little bit. Ooh, all right. Yeah, just give me a minute here. Just come to a stop. <laughs> and as we get closer, ask her to sit. Little correction. And I'm going to demonstrate the correction. It's, we got three minutes. Um, drop the leash. Pick it up. I'm going to walk and then we're going to let Mike jump in on this. Hold that strap. I'm going to go this way. we got three minutes. Come with me, Mike, like we did. You're going to just get on my right side. We did a little practice. Keep getting on my right side. Look, this is about energy. Can you correct me? Uh, go. <laughs> Put that through the hand. Drop it and relax. Keep moving. 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 Keep mo
Good, that was perfect. He walked into her. That's how we train guide dogs, not to trip us. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. There's no, here, throw me that ball. You keep moving, Mike. <laughs> and then we gotta get back on the ring. Then make a right, Mike. Come on, come right towards me, come on. That a boy, good, good. Now I'm gonna throw the rabbit. This is a rabbit, it's not a ball. You're doing excellent. Then make a right towards me, come right towards us. And then slow down, just ask Riley, to just ask. Ask, just say sit. Sit. Snap. Sit. Relax your hand, more leash, yeah. And that's the end of it. I'm gonna congratulate him on coming up to say hello, good work. I'm gonna high five, high five. And Riley sit right here. And I can do all kinds of stuff. Sit. Back in the studio, off we go. What's happening on Facebook? Anything? Um, Not really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, here, you hold her for a minute. And then we're going to just finish up the show and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Start sliding a little bit, honey. Not a girl. Good night. It's hot in here, right? Mike, Mike. No, I just I have to speak into it. I want to make sure it's yeah, yeah, close. Yeah, close. Yeah, this way. I don't like the thing. Yeah. All right, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. All right. This is what I call progress. Well, we want to talk a little bit also about therapy dogs. So now this dog can mm -hmm. be a therapy dog. Yeah, There's I think no that's which was a key thing. Well, I'm not saying even though that was a dog for you, for other people. Yeah. But I thought about that because she kind of started out. I understand. Out for you. Me. Right. We'll talk about that. You see the little kids that just want to pet her. Right. It's calming. Five, four, three. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to The Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. Uh, the Dish on Dogs, sponsored by Houndstown USA, home to the absolute happiest dogs on earth. I'm joined here by master dog trainer, Ashley Pizzo, wow. this master dog, <laughs> Riley, a 21-month-old mini golden doodle, a lot of different names put to that. Uh, we have Laura. I haven't asked Laura or Mike their nationalities yet. I, I did ask uh, Laura. Mutts. What's that? You're all mutts. All mutts. Mutations. Mutts. I'm a mutt too. So what a mutt is is a mutation, right? It's a genetic mutation. So all dogs, when you think about it, are genetic mutations. They mutated dogs from wolves. So they started out as wolves, and so we're genetic. So I think the reason I'm saying that. Because a dog brain, is a, I got myself in trouble in one of the episodes, I said necropsy, which is a dog autopsy. But the point of the matter is a dog brain in a mini doodle or whatever the hell Riley is, what is she? Go ahead, Mom. Golden, I don't want to insult Golden doodle. Golden doodle. <laughs> golden doodle. Okay. So I'm Irish, Eagle. German, whatever I've been told. But none of it matters as long as I speak English. So I don't ask any of my human students what they are it's not relevant what the, what is relevant is they speak english so what we so so you know people think pit bulls a pit bull brain is no different than the golden doodle brain there is no difference at all you can't determine just like an irish brain is no different than a muslim brain it's the same a chinese brain is a chinese there's nothing different the question is if I want to speak to somebody from China, I got to learn Chinese, or I can talk, I can yell, I can scream, I can... So, this is the same. If you want to communicate to a dog, you have to learn what a, dog is, what a dog's life is like. It's completely different than ours. And once you get that, and when you stop 
trying to bring them into our human world. Our human world is crazy. It's toxic. Cars. Uh, what are you doing over there, Laura? I see you peeking around. What, what's happening? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching what she's watching. Well, she, I can it. tell you. She's telling us. She's watching that gentleman outside come. Yeah, I'm, come, I'm waiting for him to come. To see if she... There you go. To, <laughs> right. Now she's perfectly <clears throat> fine, right? So she shouldn't bark. I said that before. In my lobby and on video, yeah. she was... <laughs> when she first got here, she was barking a little bit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then Pete, Mike, I'm sorry, Mike, corrected, but he didn't know how to correct. So when we talk about correction, by the way, a correction is a low, it has to be physical. Dogs resolve conflict physically. They don't go to therapy. They don't read books. They resolve their conflict physically with their canine teeth. So when these dog, when this dog was with her litter and her mother, her natural mother, mom would pick her up with her canine teeth and carry her around. That's how puppies get moved around. They get picked up by the neck with teeth. The canine teeth, and that's how they learn their lessons. That's how they learn not to leave the litter box. Now, obviously, as humans, we can't get down on our hands and knees and bite our dogs. That would be really kind of sick. So how we do that is we just attach a leash and a soft nylon collar. Can I don't know, can you get a close-up of that nylon collar Take thing? It Take it off. It's nothing. But I can tell you what it isn't. It's nylon. It's not a pinch collar. It's not an electric collar. It's not a prong collar. And it's not a chain collar. Nor is it a flat collar, although she has a flat collar on, and she came in with a harness today. Everybody nowadays comes in with a harness. I'm assuming it's because vets tell people that you can... I don't know why they come in. But let me just talk about a harness. A harness is designed by humans to pull things. It was designed by humans for dogs to pull sleds in Alaska. Now, what happens now when we go to Petco and we get matching harness, matching leash, matching bed, these are all wonderful human things and we should all be very, right, so all my pet owners are wonderful people. They love their dogs, but they love their dogs out of balance. They get them out of balance because the dog doesn't care about a tempur color matching bed. They'll sleep, they sleep, sleep in a den, they, they dig little holes in the ground and that's where they sleep. So they don't need this. This is all a manifestation of a human brain projecting human needs onto a dog's needs. So uh, uh, back to the harness. A harness is designed to pull. It pulls things. Now humans become that thing and you get pulled around and then you... Oh yeah, there you go. So, so we correct. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, oh, oh. oh, very dangerous, very dangerous. So we have to teach her, so we have to correct her. Because dogs, let's say this, this is a great analogy. Now everybody would say, dogs are supposed to bite. So here we are, this is a perfect thing. Huh? You said bite. Bark. Or bite. <laughs> bark. Bark. So everybody tells me I'm crazy when I say a dog doesn't bite, but a uh, bark. Let's think of this. We are a pack of wolves right here. We're a pack of wild dogs, and we're in our den and everybody can see in our den. Now, when the wolf comes by, and I have my little friend here, the subordinate member of the pack, barking, she, Riley is telling the wolf that we're in here. Well, the wolf's gonna come in here and kill us. Mom's rolling her eyes and shaking her head. Hey. We'll talk into that, and tell me what you're shaking your head for. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're thank you. All right. Well, it was all right. a good shake. Oh, it was a good <laughs> shake. Hey. Right. It was positive. Thank you. Thank you. So when you ask a dog, so let's good. Now that we're on getting on the same page, let's extend this. Let's extrapolate this conversation. That's not the right word. But where a dog barking is a dog out of balance. Period. It, it, so, and then, and then if we're going to ask a, a two, 21 month old, 20 pound dog to be the guardian of our house, this dog doesn't want to fight anybody. It doesn't want to do anything. If it, when dogs bite, 95% of the dog bites are out of fear. They feared something, whether it was a hand coming into their space. Now we're here in this little bubble. Take your little thing there. Oh. Look. This, hi guys, so we have all these wonderful people and, and our little friend Riley's having an out-of-body experience because we're literally in a fishbowl here. But she we wants can't to play. Allow, what's that? She wants to play. She, she wants to play. People, yeah. But think of this, let's say she wants to play with kids or a chase a ball that's across the street. Then obviously we know that that's a problem. So she just can't play now. You, Laura and Mike could take Riley home and play for three hours tonight, whatever they want to do, but it has to be on their terms, 
not the dog's term. That oh, we is got our it. customers. Who? Oreo's parents. Hi, Oreo's parents. <laughs> hey, Oreo's parents. Hey, Oreo's parents. there. <laughs> Huh? Where is that? Yeah, she's on, boarding right now. She's at Georgia um, Daycare. All right. Wow, funny. this is so exciting. That's, so that's funny. That's great. <laughs> that's funny. We have our friend so Oreos appropriate. here. How appropriate. So, yeah, those kids look familiar. <laughs> all right. Where was I? So we're sitting in this bubble where the dog sees reflections. As I said before, a dog doesn't even see that well to begin with. It has great night vision, but we're under the glare of, of, of yeah, fluorescent it's lights. Yeah, here than it is outside. Right. right. And here comes a bunch of kids from Disney World. You're going to correct if they see Minnie Mouse. All right. So the point of the matter is we are literally in a bubble, and people are making eye contact with us. And when, as I said earlier, people are looking in, the dog feels threatened, it barks. And what happens when the dog barks? Everybody's disappearing. So a dog barks because it thinks it's controlling its environment. It is controlling its environment. So what you were saying earlier, Laura, with the dog looks out the window and barks at squirrels. Has the squirrel ever come in the house for lunch? <laughs> huh? I hope not. Right. I hope not. not. Right. So what happens? Let me answer this question. Everything she barks at, squirrels, landscapers, mailmen, what happens when she barks? Talk into the microphone. What happens? I tell her to be quiet. Right. <laughs> and that didn't work so well. But, no, it really didn't. Right. But my point, what I'm trying to the answer is, all these things disappear. The mailman goes away, the garbage truck goes away, the landscaper, mm -hmm. the squirrel. So now this gives our friend Riley here this sense of entitlement that she is like the cowardly lion. She can bark at something and it disappears. That's an amazing power. Right? People are coming by. She thinks, the point is, she thinks she created that. Her barking created the changes in the environment. When she was in our lobby, she was barking her head off. And then she got, she adjusted. There goes a little girl. So this is wonderful. This is a wonderful uh, example of how dogs, we're literally looking out a huge window here. And there are people coming off planes from Disney World or wherever the hell they're coming from. Yeah, take a picture of them. Maybe somebody's wanted for there's a serial killer there or something. Like that. <laughs> I'm going to for a nice reward. I'm looking for a nice reward. It's a good test for Riley. Yeah, it's a good test. No, that was very good. Yeah, so this is all good. So we got 43 seconds. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a two-minute break. We'll talk a little bit more about Riley. I want to talk about our friend Bruno. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about more about Riley. Uh, and join us after the break. You're listening to The Dish on Dogs, Houndstown Radio, live every Monday night at 8 p.m., except when we're with the uh, Chloe Spencer's hockey mom. Game. Oh, oh my God, we got all our customers. Chloe Spencer, all Everybody went away. Like that. This, everybody went so away. Funny. Did you have any idea that you no. had this many customers? No, no. Well, I know we have a lot of customers. All right, guys on Facebook, stay with us. <laughs> um, and we'll join you in two, we'll be back in two minutes. Houndstown Radio. That's funny. That's so hilarious. Is an hour show? It is an hour. Oh, but okay. I have a question. Yes. I'm still on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook we're, we're on, on Facebook. Facebook. What's the question? Well, my question is, we've noticed when she watches the LED screen TV, when she sees dogs or animals, any animal right. actually, she reacts. Right. And she'll bark. Right. And she'll oh, yeah. bark. She'll go. These are but you made, but you, made a, but you made a really good point because actually Thank what you. happens Fine. is when she <laughs> when she sees the dog right. on TV and then the, the, the dog kind of disappears from the right. TV, she thinks it goes outside and she right. runs for the door to right. think like the dog's Let's outside. talk about that after the break. That's what the show's about, not but during the break. But that was the point. No, I Michael came up with that one night because we're like, Riley, the dog is on right. TV. And the truth of the matter is most dogs don't see that well, the depth perception. So they see things moving. Maybe they hear a dog on TV. So they can't really see. They can't see colors. They right, don't right. See. We know that. So they right. see like kind of like this. They're very... I think they recognize the movement. They see well, movement. Well, because the four lay, you know. But again, I'm sorry. I, I've read things, and right. we've read that the the higher the definition of the television, that it's making it easier for dogs to actually see things a little differently. Maybe. But the point is, what? She, she shouldn't be barking at anything. That's the bottom line takeaway. Yeah, I agree. Now the leash is on. Well, agree again. Every time you agree with me, right, you're, you're agreeing with Mother Nature. Anytime you say I, I agree. agree. So when she barks, is she sitting her. on her head? You're correct. So this is, the, this is the point of keeping the leash Absolutely. on her at all times. So that even when she's watching TV, if she starts to bark, it's correct. correct. Exactly. Okay. She barks at the door. Somebody knocks. Perfect. 
perfect. Good work back there. Yeah. We got a shout out to Kay. Okay. Hey. Danielle's best friend. Oh, do I know her? And Bob. Can you get by? Hi. Sure. Thank you. She gets baited a lot of money. She gets baited dog biscuits. Yeah. Are you dog biscuits? Oh, good for you. All right, folks, welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. We're having a really good time today. we got some fun people, fun dog. Um, the problem was they're asking me dog questions on the break. So the purpose of the show <laughs> was to discuss this on the break. Right. So they were talking about, it kind of segued into what I was talking about before the break. Before the break, we were talking about dogs barking. And they are thinking they're causing what's happening in their environment by barking. So Laura and Mike were saying when the dog watches TV, it barks at the TV. Eventually, whatever a dog is barking at, at some point disappears, right? Dogs don't jump out of the, the TV set. So anything that, as Ashley said, movement, dogs or they survive. They survive by the subtlest movement. So even though they don't have great depth, they don't have great depth perception, and they don't have uh, chromatic vision. They don't see deep colors. They see like if you ever watch night vision, you see people in night vision, and they have tremendous night vision. They only need a little bit of ambient light, and they see a lot. That's why they're not falling down stairs. They can run up and down your stairs at home in the middle of the night. They're not bumping into walls. So they have this incredible... So when I talk about dogs, in a sense, like the, I guess I'm not talking about... like the, They're incredibly, incredibly intelligent, and they can do in, m remarkable things. We train police dogs to apprehend criminals, to find drugs, to find bombs but they're not really finding bombs and they're not really apprehending criminals. They, they wouldn't go to work if they thought they were searching for bombs every day. Who the hell would go to work? So they're just, this is, thank you. They're just playing. It's a game for them. So we're tapping into their prey drive. Dogs have prey drive. They chase a ball. This ball, for those of you on Facebook, is not a ball. To the dog, it's a rabbit. It's prey. It's running away. That's why they want to get it. As I said, the squeaky toy is a dying animal. So everything is primitive to a dog. And we tap into their nat natural instincts. They do th the remarkable things. But the concept of allowing a dog to pull a human and bark incessantly puts the pack at risk. That's, again, whether people agree with me, disagree, take it up with Mother Nature. If you don't believe that fish belong in water, take it up with Mother Nature. If you take your fish out of water to watch Dr. Phil in the afternoon and put him on the couch with you're you, you're not going to have a fish. You're not going to have a fish, <laughs> right? So, so fish needs to be in water. All right. What was we? What else were Our we? Our main topic was, oh, was over controlling your dog. Right. Oh. Over controlling. <laughs> right. So over controlling the dog. Here's how you over control your dog. Here is our beautiful girl Riley. She has been here with us for an hour now. She's gotten plenty of love, but she we didn't ask her really to do anything. We never said outside. Walk on our left side. Don't pull on the leash. Don't bark. We never said one. We made some sounds, as Laura pointed out to me earlier. We make sounds, and dogs react to the sound. So through consistency and structure, over-controlling means don't project human things onto a dog. This is a pet peeve of mine, no pun intended. But therapy dog, dogs are as afraid of this airport as humans are. So if you have a fear of flying, don't project that fear on a poor 20-pound dog. If I can't walk, I'm not going to take Riley here and fall down, expect her to support my big, fat, 220-pound body. So what I'm saying is, Riley, this is Riley in her purest form. She's this beautiful, amazing animal that can enjoy to be such a tremendous family member if we leave her alone to be a dog. Don't try to make her human. Leave her be a dog. Leave birds fly. Fish swim. Dogs are social pack animals that just want to insert themselves in the pack. They have to <coughs> insert themselves in the pack. And they have to be the subordinate member of the pack. They can't be in charge. This is about as simple as it gets. So when we talk about over-controlling, we're not telling her to sit, stay, shut up, be good. Ashley is very soothingly, lovingly petting her. And the dog is fine. I got food here, but I'm not giving it to her. So... I, what's that? She was drinking the coffee and I noticed that. All right, well, she'll, be, she'll be up all night like me. Now well, we're going to go smoke really a cigar. Okay, so, so we have a million dollar question. Go ahead, million dollar question. Do you How have do we stop dollar? her from wanting to come on the bed and not feel guilty about it? Okay, 
That you have to again. That's a great that's question. A therapist, I think. Right. Yeah. No, I no, think no, so. no, no, no. Right. Yeah, right. right. A human therapist. Right. Human therapist. I think it's hard here, it exactly. here it is. But here it is. So guilt is one of the biggest inhibitors. I've seen every one of my clients, every one, I feel bad about this. Because we use crates, like denning animals, dogs dent. So we use crates. And I, when I say the word crate, people cringe. They cringe when I say the word as though it's a cake. First of all, dogs see through the, cake, the, the crate. They see through it. So they don't see the bars. That, that's what their vision isn't that great. So once you do it correctly, a dog dens. They're denning animals. So everybody I go to the house, they all have crates, but it's in the garage. They stop using it when the dog became housebroken. And they did it with just, just for timeouts, which is ridiculous, or when they're going to bed, only at the most. So we use crates in a way that dogs love it. What was my point? I was trying to make a million dollar question. Oh, so this guilt. Mike says we feel guilty. Everyone feels guilty. I feel guilty about my kids. I feel guilty about this. I feel guilty about that. But that inhibits your own personal growth and it sure the hell prohibits the, uh, inhibits the growth of the dog. Mm -hmm. So the point is, if you feel horrible, let's see if you feel as bad. Tonight, if you feel so damn bad about it, you <laughs> sleep with her in her bed. Okay? <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. That's not right. Exactly. You don't feel like that. All right, but if you feel guilty, you sleep on the couch next to the creek. When I we interact with our dogs, we just get down on the ground with them. We enter their world. We don't invite them up to our world because it's confusing. And when your dogs are on the couch, then on Sunday, you, uh, on Easter, you're going to scream at them to get off the couch, and there's this, all this toxic energy. And quite frankly, your guests that come over, they're going to say she's cute, but they don't really want her on on their lap jumping on you. As, as so True. right. So. So it unless doesn't they invite them. Unless they invite them. But you're not there yet. So what you want to do is just set a boundary. Look at how perfect she is here. Yeah. She has been nothing. We've been doing everything we can to try to get her off balance. That was a word we talk about, balance. We don't want the dog, rah, 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 and we don't want the dog with its tail between its legs shaking. So if you see, you don't need to be an animal behaviorist to look at a dog. And I use these dogs in the airports. I've yet to see a very happy therapy dog coming through these airports. They're, they're, the dog's tail's not wagging, they're getting pulled around by people. It, and to me, if you're an animal rights advocate, I'm, here's what I'm actually frankly surprised about. If you're an animal rights advocate, PETA and all these people ad, ad, advocate against puppy mills or whatever they do, why aren't they advocating against the use of these people that take dogs in little bags on a plane? It, it's it's uh, there's something wrong with it, in my view. It's not what a dog's life should be. It shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, because a dog is as a free... You don't think a dog stuffed under the chair of Southwest Smelly Ass South, whoops, Southwest <laughs> Airlines is uh, stuck under the chair? Is that a good experience for a dog? Or getting yanked around, through, handed through security at airports? It's not. You look. The next time you guys are at it, people listening, next time you're at, at an airport, show me a happy tail wagging dog. You won't. You'll see oppressed, suppressed, over-controlled dogs. That's the point. over control. Yeah, you can make them do these things. You can make them tolerate the carousel here. You can make them do these things. But you're really suppressing their natural instinct. So in police work, we tap into their natural instincts. Everything we do with police dogs and service dogs is allow them to be dogs. Everything is tapping into their prey drive opposed to suppressing their, their prey drive and taking this, the fun out of life for them. So police dogs live a dog's life. They run, they chase people, chase things, sniff they things sniff down. things, hunt things. So they're living the viva loca. That's the difference between cer certain use of dogs in our society and suppressing their natural instincts. So if you see a lot of service dogs, they're actually breeding the spirit out of them. In my view, people can come on. You can Facebook me if you think I'm crazy. Come on, let's talk about it. I think we're breeding the spirit out of dogs. And it's, it's, it's sad for me to see dogs that are, you know, there's other ways you can drink heavily and get on an airplane. That's what I do. If you're afraid of flying, have a couple of shots of scotch. That'll work just as well. So, but look at this beautiful dog. Listen, you were listening to the Dish on Dog, Houndstown Radio, and with these wonderful people. We're going to keep them in our loop. They're part of our Houndstown family. We just met today. 
Uh, I have video of Riley, if you'll let me share that. I don't know if Laura's a little camera shy. So before and after. I'm, not, I'm just doing it. Anyway, so I'll, I'll, worry, about, I'll worry about the lawsuit. So I'll worry about the lawsuit later. I was on that liability right, Yeah, she didn't know before she signed that. Yeah, actually, I think you did. I think she did. But listen to us next week, as long as we're not preempted by that mammalian game of hockey where humans chase little pucks of we'll rabbits. Try to have <laughs> Next week, Laura. That's a mammalian game, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get that.